Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about 3D printing airplane. Is a printer under $200 worth buying? Please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and we do subscriber giveaways. So the main hobby here is RC airplanes, not 3D printing. So the main goal is to actually build and make flyable airplanes. And what sets this apart from going down to the hobby store and buying a kit and putting it together is the, of course, the 3D printer. If you buy the wrong 3D printer, it can end up becoming a hobby in itself and you will not have as much time for flying your or building the RC airplane that you really want to. So for me, I'm 3D printing all the time. I do it for work, um, but I'm also doing it for fun. But I'm still looking for a printer that is more like a daily driver and something that is reliable. Every time you get in it, it starts right up. For me, for the past number of years, my daily driver has been the Artillery Sidewinder. It has just been a very reliable daily use printer. I use constantly for work and I also use it extensively for developing my airplanes. So the Sidewinder is great, but it is a higher price point. And there's also a whole generation of new printers coming soon. They are far from being in the $200 range. Can you get a daily driver printer for under $200? So this is the Creality Ender 3, and it came out in 2017, and it has been a very dominant printer in the low budget printer realm. They have sold over 800,000 of these units. So I printed this entire plane with the ColorFab lightweight PLA on this Ender 3. It is a very capable printer to a point. It still has the 8-bit motherboard and is the cheapest version of the Ender 3 that you can buy. And it is fully capable of printing all of the Sorecraft models as well as a lot of the other 3D printable planes out there. And this is my test bed for testing out new ideas. It is capable of doing it. This is not a daily driver kind of printer. It's cheap, but the first thing I did when I bought it was, God, I really want to upgrade it. So in a way, this is kind of like buying a project car when you really want to have a daily driver. And you'll end up starting a new hobby basically. And this will end up being a hobby or you'll set it aside and you'll never use it. So for me, it, it's, it's a great way to start and get into the hobby of 3D printing, but it's not really what you want if you're trying to print RC airplanes and the airplanes are the hobby that you really want to be doing. So if you bought an Ender 3 Basic, there are a lot of upgrades you can get for it. There are quieter motherboards. There are different build plates. There are different extruders. There's other attachments and touchscreens and such, but everything adds a little bit to the price. And before you know it, you spent the same amount that it would be to have a much better printer right out of the box. Now, Creality has upgraded models with all the stuff that make them more livable, but they're also a lot more expensive. Basically, any of the upgrades are going to uh, be over the $200 price point, which makes it, do you really want to have an Ender 3 or are you fine with having an Ender 3-like printer but has much more capabilities? <laughs> Okay, so this printer right here, 
is not a Creality printer, even though it looks almost identical. This is from Voxel Lab. And this is a Voxel Lab Aquila S2. And this is available for under $200. But it has many of the upgrades to it already that you would really like to have in your Ender 3. Now you can get from Voxel Lab, you can get an exact copy of the Ender 3 Basic. But why? Even at $150, I don't think it's worth it. You need to have some upgrades to make it a livable printer. The most important upgrade to me is the 32-bit quiet motherboard. It makes this printer print very nicely and very quietly, which I have to say is one of the most annoying parts of the Ender 3 Basic. It also has a magnetic removable build plate that is textured. It has a direct drive extruder that's capable of 300 degrees. There are some materials coming out, specifically the Color Fab High Temperature Lightweight PLA has to be printed at 285 degrees to activate the foaming on it. So the Ender 3 will not run at that high of a temperature. So, you... so taking the cover off the direct drive extruder, you see that you've got your extruder stepper motor and it's got metal gears. And here is the, the feed mechanism, very similar to uh, the MakerBot. And you can buy this entire unit on Amazon. I think it's uh, $69 and free shipping if you have Amazon Prime. So there are a couple of downsides to this printer. It does have a non-standard print nozzle. And because of that, you will need to buy print nozzles directly from Voxel Lab for it. They're more expensive than buying the cheap ones from Amazon. But at the same time, you shouldn't be going through that many print nozzles. And you can even get the hardened tips if you want. So this version does not come with the auto bed leveling sensor. You can get one. It is the Voxel Lab Aquila S2 Pro. It's a little bit more expensive. It puts it over the $200 mark. And it's, to me, not quite as necessary because the print bed on this unit is relatively flat. And once you get it manually set up, it's, it's pretty straight. You do need to do the manual bed leveling, even if you had the auto bed leveling sensor, just to get it close anyway. So, so I wanted to buy a printer for my son for Christmas. And I was not about to buy another Ender 3. And my son actually put this together himself without any coaching from me. It took a little bit of tinkering to put it together. It took about an hour to put all the pieces together. We were able to print right out of the box. All right, let's do some printing and show you how well this prints compared to an Ender 3. <music> So for this, we're going to do a comparison, just do a test print, and we're going to be printing with the same material. And we're even going to use the same G code because these, both of these machines are so identical, they can use exactly the same code. So for setting up your slicer, you can just use the Ender 3 settings and use it on the Voxel Lab Aquila S2. I even waited to turn on the Ender 3 because it is just so loud. All right, let's get this started.
So this is from Cura Slicer. And this is on the Ender 3. And you can see the, the lines. That has to do with the 8-bit mainboard. The exact same part. The exact same G-code printed on the Voxel Lab. It doesn't have those those lines. See the, the lines. And then Perusa Slicer has the exact same thing going on. So you can see the the, the lines in this part from the 8-bit mainboard. Then those are not evident in the Voxel Lab part. Same exact G-code. Here's a wingtip that I printed with the Ender 3 and you can you can see what the 8-bit main board does. It almost looks like a topographical map. It's kind of neat, but you know, does it really need to be there? Especially when you want a really nice shape. This is the not the same part. This is for a, a DS wing. Similar wing tip, but you can see this was printed. This is how it should look with the 32-bit mainboard. So this is up close of the Polymaker lightweight pre-foamed PLA from the Voxel Lab. Did a pretty good job printing it. And this is a comparison to the exact same part printed on my Sidewinder. And the parts are nearly identical. So the Polymaker lightweight PLA turned out so well, I decided to print out a whole wing. Now we've loaded up some eSun lightweight foaming PLA. Looking really good. looks pretty nice there's a little bit of excess on it but it, it printed well and so this is the part that printed on my sidewinder and it it's a little bit better but quality is it's pretty darn close to the same All right, so overall, the Voxel Lab Aquila S2 is a pretty good printer. Um, I have to say, it is more than capable of printing RC airplane parts. And uh, it's relatively easy to live with and uh, does a pretty good job. And for the price point, uh, it's pretty hard to beat. Now, is this better than a Sidewinder? from artillery it's really close it prints almost identically i have to say i like the sidewinder because it's bigger footprint and i do print a lot of bigger things but if you can get away with this size printer this might be the printer for you as well as it being available right now and being able to print with right now it is possible that you can upgrade this with the Clipper software in the future to be able to print 
the high speed printing that all of the next gen printers will be doing. It won't be able to run as fast, but it has the capability of running two to two and a half times faster than what it's printing right now with the current software it uses. So this could be a good printer for you. It's definitely going to be a great printer for my son. He's going to enjoy it a lot and be able to print a whole bunch of things. And hopefully I will get him printing airplanes as well. Again, thanks for watching and please like and subscribe and tune in for more videos to come soon.